It's a well-known fact that the two seasons of Space 1999 are very different from one another, in all kinds of aspects. The most obvious of these in Season 2 were the new casting choices, a different main set, a change of pace, and generally an entirely new format. The show was no longer the thought-provoking, introspective science fiction show that so many had come to love. It was now another action-packed, monster-fighting series. That's not to say it's necessarily bad, just different. The Tale of Two Moons video by Chris Dale on the Jerry Anderson YouTube channel is worth a watch for a more in-depth look at the changes between series. But today, we're going behind the scenes and looking at the music. Jerry Anderson alumni Barry Gray had provided the soundtracks to most of Jerry's TV shows. This included the first season of Space 1999. However, with increasing interference from ITC America, it was decided that a new composer would be required. The man put up to the task was Derek Wadsworth, who had worked with the likes of Judy Garland and George Harrison as a session musician. However, he wasn't completely new to the Jerry Anderson team, having scored the theme to the TV pilot Into Infinity, aka The Day After Tomorrow. I did a pilot called um, The Day After Tomorrow, which was a, um, an educational, a science, a scientific educational film which was hoped to become a series, but didn't become a series. Um, Into Infinity, The Day After Tomorrow. Um, up to that point, I'd, I didn't have a great deal of film experience. I'd been working with rock and roll stars, and uh, I was an arranger and a composer and a conductor, and also a trombone player. Um, so that was my first break into, into that exciting world. When, when The Day After Tomorrow wasn't taken up, um, for some reason, personal or political that I don't quite know about, to be honest. Um, Jerry was replacing Barry, or they parted company for some reason, I don't quite know. But they, they, they were looking for a composer for, for year two of Space 1999. And uh, in consultation with one of his friends, uh, one or two of his friends, the editors, and uh, Dave Lane and others, Jerry asked what they thought of my work on, on, on from the day after tomorrow, and they gave me the thumbs up. And um, I was very excited to get the call and say, would you, would you score the series? Similar to how he'd composed the theme for Into Infinity, Derek's method for coming up with the melody to the title sequence came from the actual title of the show itself. Well, I had a crazy idea, mad idea, that wouldn't it be nice to have a, a tune that everybody knows and it could be a song and Shirley Bassey could sing it or something like that. So, stupidly, I took the, num the syllables of Space 1999 Nine, I can never say the damn thing, uh, and made it in, use those number of syllables as notes, thinking it might be converted to a sound one day. Never was. Might, might still, but you never know. Could get lucky. But um, I used those number of syllables, space 1999, da 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 da, and I used a constant root, an A root, and suspended the chords above it, which kind of clashed nicely, and I, 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 I sort of felt quite pleased with it, and, and I got the thumbs up. And, and from then on, of course, it was the, the long haul of the incidental music after that. This, of course, was after Jerry had briefed him for the kind of sound he wanted for year two, and the chosen influence comes very much out of left field. I had a meeting with Jerry and with Fred Friedberger um, and Dave Lane, and, and we discussed it, and I said, well, what kind of thing would you like? And he, he said, well, what I like is... <laughs> The drums really get you, don't they? So, I don't mind, better try and write, write something beaty. Um, that was Jerry's favourite at the time. I didn't think that was terribly appropriate for a science fiction series, but it was a good sort of cop show theme. I mean, he, he was working closely with Barry, and I, I wondered if I ought to be sort of working in that sort of field. But he, he said, no, you know, I like what you do. You, you, you do as you see it. Very generously that way, is Jerry. He, he, he doesn't, he's not on your back all the time. He, he lets you get on with it. it if you're trusted enough to be employed, then he's going to trust you to do it. If you fail, you know, that's your fault. Of course, there is no show that is made without any mishaps, and Derek has one particular story that comes to mind. And I, 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 I didn't have a great deal of experience, but I was working with a very experienced um, editor called Alan Willis. And I remember one particular scene when Jerry said to me, um, see what we can do with that particular scene, Derek, get something sort of interesting going. And I was sitting in the movie earlier with Alan Willis, 
And I said, he said, well, what do you think, Derek? Because she had to rush the music out. I said, oh, I don't know, you need to be some tension of some sort. And Alan said, do you think it would be nice if, as he opens the door, the music, instead of coming in, just kind of creeps in slowly and then builds in tension until he hits this guy on the nose and we can have a real sting and then a kind of uh, speed, a bit of pacey music as he runs away and the music can stop dead as the door slams shut again. So I said, oh, that's good, yeah. So we turned it all out. And we go to the viewing theatre and Jerry said, what did you do with that scene? And Alan said, oh, Derek thought it would be a good idea if the music crept in slowly and then we hit him on the nose and then we... And Jerry said, well done, Derek. <laughs> that's a... So I bought Alan a very large drink afterwards. Didn't... But he, he helped me through and... Um... Very exciting, very exciting.